Good morning, I am Inez Fernandez and I will be the Master of Ceremonies during this World Chagas Disease Day. Included in the World Health Calendar in 2019, it was celebrated for the first time in 2020. Its main objective is to raise awareness about the importance of fighting this disease. Chagas disease is also known as silent or silenced disease not only because of its slow and often asymptomatic clinical course, but also because it mainly affects the most vulnerable people. It was in April 14, 1909, that the first patient was diagnosed with this disease by Dr. Tibeto just which turned awareness about this neglected disease, often diagnosed in its latest stages, is essential to improve rates of early treatment and cure, along with interrupting its transmission. On this very day, just a year ago, we were honored to be able to pay homage to important figures who dedicated their lives to science and especially to research on Chagas disease. Among them, Dr. Zilton Andrade and Dr. Jose Rodriguez Coda, researchers at Fiocruz Bahia and Osvaldo Cruz Institute, respectively. Although they are both no longer amongst us and we so miss them, their legacy stands. This is our tribute. Video? Video, please. If you cannot find the video, please tell me and then uh, we can uh, go on. Well, let's wait for a few minutes. These are the issues with online events. We have unexpected issues. Can you continue for a minute and then we'll continue. We'll find the video later. We had a minor technical issue in finding the video. So let us give the floor to Dr. Marilda Gonçalves, Vice Director of uh, Fiocruz Bahia and she'll pay homage to Dr. Zilton Andrade. We can start, Marilda. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to greet Nisia Trindade and Maria Inés. And on behalf of the president, I'd like to greet all the public figures who are here with us in this world class Chagas Disease Day. As Inés said, this is an endemic disease in our country. It affects the most vulnerable and poor in the country. Silton Andrade was a doctor, a parasitologist. He was born in Santo Antonio de Jesus in Bahia in 1924. He graduated in medicine by the Federal University of Bahia, did his uh, residency in pathology in 53 by two and University School of Medicine in New Orleans under Dr. Charles Dulac. Dr. Zoltan did his PhD in pathology in 56 at USP under guidance of Lucien 
Juan. And in 59, finished his studies. His postdoctorate was in Mount Sinai, New York, with Dr. Hans. He was a professor of medicine in USB from 53 until 84. And he was a full professor and a merit professor in 85. He was a visiting professor at Cornell University Medical College in New York with the pathology department for three months. His main interests in uh, research were experimental models in exosomosis, septal fibrosis associated with infection by hepatic capillary and rats and cirrhosis by tetachloride of carbon and pathology of parasitic diseases especially schistosomiasis and Chagas. Sutton Andrade was married to Dr. Sonia Gomez de Andrade and also worked intensely with Chagas disease. His studies triggered the advancement and uh, the knowledge of endemic parasitic diseases and publications related to schistosomiasis and Chagas disease mainly are benchmarks and references in the scientific literature all over the world. Dr. Zilton developed scientific activities for more than 90 years in our institution, in Gonzalo Muniz Institute. He opened the pathology school of Bahia and uh, trained several generations of doctors in Bahia. He opened and helped to correct the first Dr. Zilton Andrade actually was uh, always honored. He was uh, giving lectures in the medical school and actually he was the director of our center of uh, research, Gonzalo Los Muniz. He published more than 262 papers, chapters and books edited several books. He's a reference in studies for Chagas disease. Amongst the tributes is uh, Alfredo Judy Rubinsky Award from the Academy of Medicine in, uh, in 72, in addition to the National Prize of Science and Technology by CNPQ in 84. Dr. Zoltan Andrade also participated in uh, different organizations that promote research like the CNPq in Brazil and he was responsible for the advancement of the studies of parasitic diseases. He has a publication about Chagas disease. His uh, thesis was presented during the, uh, the course. He was studying the system of conduction of the disease through the heart through the analysis of seared port ports and the data represent till this date the best analysis of the important correlation of this disease in the anatomical pathological system. He has several publications also on schistosomiasis, and he has this very important contribution to science, especially in our country. In this long journey, we see the School of Pathology as his main achievement. Dr. Zilton was one of the founding members of the Brazilian Society of Pathology and the Brazilian Society of Tropical Diseases, where he was always participating. In the list of activities, he developed several lines of research and he made different observations related to autopsies. That was a landmark of his work in pathology, especially in Chagas disease and schistosomiasis. The recognition of the excellence of his work is reflected by the numerous awards. I will list only a few. 
the National Award on Science and Technology by the CNPQ in 84, member of the Brazilian Science Academy, member of the Latin American Society of Pathology, honorary president of the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, honorary member of the Argentinian Society of Cardiology, member of the uh, Academy of Medicine of Bahia, Fiocruz Sigma Pharma in Parasitic and Infectious Diseases, Brancos of the Order of Scientific Merit, and uh, Euclides de Jesus Honor. Brazilian uh, Cardiology Society, an honorary member of the Medical Society, the oldest cultural association of our country. He died in July of 2020 and left a huge scientific and human legacy. He was a father, a writer, a critic, political critic, and a, an advocate of democracy. He was always fighting to reduce social inequalities. I'd like to thank the honor of living with next to him in our scientific environment. Thank you, Ines. Thank you, Marilda, for the beautiful tribute. So a hand of applause to Dr. Zilton. Unfortunately, there is no audience Otherwise, certainly we would have a hand uh, of applause. Now I'd like to invite to pay homage to Dr. José Rodríguez Cora, the director of Instituto Oswaldo Cruz, Dr. José Paulo Leite. Thank you, Inés. Good morning, everyone. Everyone who is part of this panel. And uh, on behalf of Nisia Trindade, I'd like to greet all our colleagues. On um, behalf of Matilda Gonçalves, Director of the Gonçalo Muniz Institute, I'd like to greet also my colleagues from Fiocruz. And on behalf of my colleague from Andre Hoque, Coordinator of Fiochaga, I'd like to greet all the colleagues working with Chagas disease. Good morning to all those who are listening to us today, April 14, World Chagas Disease Day. Our solidarity to all those who lost their dear ones to COVID-19. We also lost several colleagues in Fiocruz. Our solidarity, love and thanks to all of them all those who helped with Fiocruz, our strength and energy goes to those who are now fighting for their lives or re trying to recover from the sequela of this disease. Today, we would also like to remember, or more than that, celebrate the memory of two emerit researchers of Fiocruz, amongst the most important scientists in Brazil who contributed significantly to the generation of scientific knowledge and helped minimize the consequences in patients who suffered with Chagas disease. Siltan Andrade, I had the privilege of being his student in the pathology course, in the basic course in February, 1980, here. And Professor Jose Rodriguez Soura, in addition to being his former student, we were friends since uh, January 1980, so more than 40 years of friendship. It is about him that I have the honor of speaking about, considering his simplicity, it will be easy, but it's very difficult considering his complex academic life and the void left with his loss, one of the founding members of the Brazilian Society of Tropical Medicine and one of the most important figures in uh, tropical medicine, member of the National Academies of Medicine and Science, emerit professor of the Medicine of Rio de Janeiro, Grão Cruz. Uh, 
Concurs of the National Order of the Scientific of Merit, award of and uh, author of the magazine Oswaldo Cruz, and one of the creators of the postgraduate studies of tropical medicine. He was the icon, the most important figure, a benchmark. In 2006, he received second place in the 48th edition of the Jabuti Prize in uh, Natural and Health Sciences with the book Dynamic of Infectious and Parasitic Diseases in two volumes. When asked about the prize, he said, it's, uh, I'm very proud because uh, most of the chapters were written by my former students. And he complimented. And the award is a huge satisfaction. It values the work of hundreds of researchers who have been revising this work done for 35 years. This is certainly the most important book in the current area of infectious and parasitic diseases in Brazil. And the recognition of this work is very rewarding. This shows the generosity of our professor in uh, welcoming his uh, disciples. Fiocruz was his home for decades. He was vice president of research and for twice uh, president of IOC in the 70s and 80s. He was very important. That is when he was designated by the Minister of Health to establish a diagnosis about the Institute and the main endemic diseases in Brazil. One of the most important contributions of Professor Noda was uh, the Institute having several researchers uh, hired, Leonidas and Maria Dine, Luis Hayes, amongst others. The setting up of the basic course, as he always said, was the updated version of the traditional course of uh, applications in Manguinhos, where it all started. And it allowed several former students to be hired later on, amongst whom I am. This is what is, matters for science that is quality science, young researchers and uh, experienced researchers. He was the editor of the magazine, Memories of Instituto Oswaldo Cruz. His studies allowed for several colleagues to enter the studies that make up the whole complex of public health in the Fio Cruz. And today they are leaders in Fio Cruz. And a chat with Professor Coda in 2007 as part of the celebration that of his 90 years, he shared his trajectory about his childhood, young age, and career. He also worked with Adriano Suassuna in this small Taperua, his uh, hometown. He came with no money at 19 to continue his studies here in Rio de Janeiro recently. Studies done by the University of Stanford in the USA and uh, the University of Sao Paulo placed Dr. Coda as one of the most uh, influential scientists in the world. The study of Shanghai's disease was uh, amongst his most important contributions. In 2019, when the World Shanghai's Disease Day was established by the WHO, he said, the WHO will have days for many diseases, and Shanghai's had been forgotten for being a, a disease limited to Latin America. It was a scandal when I published an article with a, a colleague calling the attention to the presence of Shaka's disease in the first world countries and the need to contain transmission through organ donation and uh, blood transfusions. The list of attributes of Professor Coda is so long, but not as long as the recognition for his landmark studies shared by the whole institution at the moment. 
So even after your death, after his death, it stands, Leonardo da Vinci. In the hallways of Manguinhos, Coda's work stays and shall stay forever. Thank you very much for this honor. Let's have an excellent event. Thank you, Zep Paolo, for this tribute. And my hand goes to Dr. Pora and Dr. Zoltan. I'd like to invite now Philippe Dunaton, Executive Director of Unitate. Uh, because my Portuguese is not uh, good at all. But I'm, I'm very glad to be with you today. Uh, it's an important uh, day for Unité, together with a uh, few crews and few tech, of course. But um, unfortunately, I was not able to be with you today, uh, which is, uh, of course, uh, last year uh, we launched the idea of the project, uh, I was supposed to be uh, in Brasilia with you, so it's the second time we know that uh, the, the world has been uh, challenged uh, with this uh, pandemia, and, uh, and of course we know the consequences, and uh, we uh, all uh, hope that uh, it will uh, be uh, better at some point. And I was uh, discussing with... Um, our colleague from Fio Cruz the other day when I announced the decision of the board and we come back to that to support this project, the board of Unite. But I hope that I will be with you next year. That's my hope uh, because it will be uh, uh, quite important for us uh, to see uh, and be uh, in presential review. So again, thanks uh, Nizia, thanks for the team, for the hard work. Uh, it's uh, really important, and I will be short, but uh, just I want to make a couple of comments. Uh, first, I think that um, it's important for United because of the fact that uh, Chagas disease was not in the agenda of global health uh, until recently, and which is uh, something that, uh, as we know, in terms of public health, uh, was a bad thing. The second thing is we believe that, uh, uh, and together with your crews and all the partners in the countries, of course, uh, in Brazil, but also Bolivia, Colombia, and Paraguay, <laughs> that this project that we support uh, is a way first to uh, really focus on, on the change that needs to be done in the fight against uh, Chagas, in terms, of course, progress in terms of diagnostic, but also progress in therapeutic to have uh, better treatment, uh, uh, less uh, with a, with a small smaller duration, and of course, uh, toxic effect. So, combined together with uh, uh, the vision of public health that uh, Hugh Cruz has, uh, is uh, absolutely key to change. Uh, of course, for the women and the children, but overall for the entire population that can suffer from this uh, insidious uh, disease. So it, we are very proud to, to be with uh, Brazil and, uh, and uh, Fio Cruz on that. We know the history and uh, to uh, pay tribute to their history is to finish the job. Uh, against uh, Chagas. And I think that this project has the potential to make a, a big difference. The second point I want to make is the commitment of Brazil overall, the leader to make that change, uh, of course, is not just Brazil, it's also the other countries I mentioned, but I think that we need to have a, a leadership into that. And I think it's quite important. As you know, Brazil is also uh, a founding member of UNITED. So to, to be, again, uh, on that fight together means a lot uh, for us. And I just want also to flag one thing that I discussed with the colleagues of the FIO Cruz. Beyond the disease uh, 
of shale gas and, and the difference we can make. I think we need also, for us at least, it's important to have a different model uh, on this organization and to fight that kind of disease. That is not just uh, with the international body, but there is a strong commitment from Brazil in terms of scale up. So we need to demonstrate that this will work and I'm sure it will work, it will take a little bit of time, but uh, we are great expectation. But even we are even greater expectation uh, to see that the commitment from the country to take this and of course to scale up, that will be uh, the real impact. So again, uh, I don't want to be too long, but thanks uh, Nisa, I think that I, I can say that the team that are working from the Secretary with the colleagues in Brazil, they just say uh, to me, and I said it uh, already for, to Fiocruz, but I think it's quite important that it's a pleasure to work with you guys. Um, it's uh, the commitment, uh, the, the, the professionalism, and also the, the, the reactivity is absolutely key. So we know that we will need to have this because we know that the situation on health uh, in, in that region is not that good so far, but uh, I think that we, we see a light and it's very important also to focus on, on real uh, and uh, uh, still uh, challenge in, in terms of public health. Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Philip. I'd like to ask our technicians about the video. Now we may watch the video. A partir de 1909, quando Carlos Chagas descreveu uma nova doença humana, identificou o parasita que a causa, o Trypanosoma cruzi, e o inseto que a transmite, conhecido como barbeiro, a ciência brasileira coloca em pauta uma dimensão fundamental da saúde pública no país. A desigualdade socioeconômica e as precárias condições de vida de suas populações rurais. O século XX é palco do contínuo desenvolvimento das pesquisas sobre a doença de Chagas. Muitos estudiosos contribuíram para isso. Criador do curso de pós-graduação em Medicina Tropical da Fiocruz, Dr. José Rodrigues Coura se destaca por estudos clínicos em diferentes áreas do país e pela investigação epidemiológica na Amazônia, onde há transmissão pela ingestão de alimentos contaminados e por barbeiros que atacam trabalhadores que extraem a palha da piaçava. Eu digo sempre brincando que eu sou um sobrevivente, mas um sobrevivente bem sucedido, porque eu fiz tudo o que planejei e muita coisa que eu não planejei. Na realidade, eu pensava em ser um bom médico, só. Mas fui um bom médico, é... Fui professor, professor titular, catedrático, aliás, né, da maior universidade do Brasil na época, que é a Universidade Federal do Rio de Janeiro. E depois vim para Fiocruz, que foi, digamos assim, do, do, não vou dizer o final de vida mas o coroamento da minha vida. É, como chefe de um laboratório importante, é, tem dez colegas, meus companheiros de trabalho, é, doutores né, no laboratório, um dos laboratórios 
mais produtivos do Instituto Oswaldo Cruz. Na área da patologia, os doutores Hilton e Sônia Andrade, unidos por laços de amor e pela devoção à ciência, se destacam no estudo dos processos pelos quais o parasita produz alterações nas células, tecidos e órgãos, o que permite a compreensão dos mecanismos de evolução da doença no organismo. O que nós procurávamos é caracterizar, do ponto de vista anatomopatológico, a doença de Chagas. Quer dizer, contribuindo para aumentar o conhecimento na área, que já era um conhecimento feito pelos pioneiros, vamos dizer assim, da, dessa doença. E é o sentido que o, o, o patologista, de um modo geral, o, o investigador trabalha, né? não vai descobrir a pólvora, mas vai aumentar ou facilitar o desenvolvimento. Os e construtores dessa tradição, esses pesquisadores se destacam ainda pelo dedicado trabalho de formação de novos pesquisadores e profissionais, contribuindo para renovar e inovar essa tradição que une ciência, saúde e sociedade. Dos seus mestres você tem o um exemplo e você aprende com seus alunos. Tudo que eu aprendi, aprendi mesmo. Foi com meus alunos. This very moving and beautiful video we just watched is a production of the Osvaldo Cruz House with a text of the researcher Simone Krop. Now I would like to thank the participation of Dr. Philip. We know he has a very tight schedule and Philip, please, when you need to leave our meeting, just feel free to go. Thank you very much for your participation in our seminar. Now, we will watch a video that was sent by Ambassador Maria Luisa Escorel. She's the Deputy Permanent Representative of the Permanent Mission of Brazil at the United Nations and other international agencies in Geneva. Senhor Ministro da Saúde, Dr. Marcelo Queiroga, Senhora Presidente da Fiocruz, Dr. Anísia Trindade. Ladies and gentlemen, representatives at Fiocruz. Senhor Diretor Executivo da Unicaid, Filipe Neto. Executive Director. Brasil em Genebra. Agradeço a Dra. Anísia a honra e o privilégio do convite para participar das celebrações desta segunda edição do Dia Mundial da Doença de Chagas. I congratulate Fio Cruz for the leadership in this initiative and their contribution is essential for the public health. We have to celebrate the strength of science in this context. O Brasil liderou a campanha para criar o Dia Mundial da Doença de Chagas, o que finalmente conseguimos na Assembleia Mundial da Saúde de 2019. 
esse esforço diplomático honra a luta das pessoas afetadas pela doença de Chagas, de governos e da sociedade civil, ao longo de muitos anos, para chamar a atenção para esta enfermidade silenciosa e invisível que continua a afetar de modo desproporcional as populações mais pobres e vulneráveis. Continuamos a trabalhar para promover a conscientização internacional e incentivar o desenvolvimento de novas ferramentas para enfrentar a doença. Na OMS, o Brasil busca de forma permanente incentivar que se dê maior atenção às doenças tropicais negligenciadas. Apoiamos a proposta de celebrar, em 31 de janeiro, o Dia Mundial das Doenças Tropicais Negligenciadas. Participamos da elaboração do lançamento do novo mapa do caminho para eliminar tais doenças, que definiu as metas mundiais para a resposta à doença de Chagas até 2030, incluindo o objetivo de interrupção da transmissão em 15 países. Na Unitaid, o Brasil apoiou, inclusive com aportes financeiros, a criação de mandato para apoio a soluções médicas inovadoras na resposta à doença de Chagas. Alegro-me em ver que esse mandato já deu frutos concretos no projeto Cuida Chagas a ser lançado nesta cerimônia. Neste 14 de abril, o mundo e o Brasil ainda enfrentam sérios desafios para vencer a pandemia de Covid-19, a qual as pessoas que vivem com a doença de Chagas são ainda mais vulneráveis. Que esta comemoração nos sirva de renovada inspiração para seguirmos avançando na luta que é de todos pela superação da emergência e por padrões mais elevados de saúde e bem-estar para todos. Muito obrigada. É, eu gostaria de complementar que a embaixadora ela também é vice-presidente do conselho de administração. I would like to say that the ambassador is also member of the board of directors of Unitates. Now, we will have another video with the words sent by the doutora Maria Angela Simão. Dr. Maria Angela Simão, assistant director general at the WHO. Dia Mundial contra a Doença de Chagas, a Organização Mundial de Saúde reforça a necessidade de garantir acesso a serviços de saúde que incluam acesso a diagnóstico precoce e tratamento de qualidade para pessoas vivendo com essa doença. Nós sabemos que temos em torno de 6 a 7 milhões de pessoas infectadas pelo... Eu acho que estamos com algum problema novamente, eu posso continuar? Eu apologize because there are technical issues and we can't hear the audio of the video we cannot hear the video is not working correctly thank you very much okay so let's proceed with the agenda then And I would like to ask our technical support, please. Let me know if you will try again with the video or whether I proceed with the agenda. Um, we don't know what the technical problem is, but we can't hear the videos, neither this one nor the other one. So we will try once again and resume the agenda. Thank you very much.
Nesse Dia Mundial contra a Doença de Chagas, a Organização Mundial de Saúde reforça a necessidade de garantir acesso a serviços de saúde que incluam acesso a diagnóstico precoce e tratamento de qualidade para pessoas vivendo com essa doença. To deliver quality treatment for all patients of the disease, we know that there are 17 million infected persons with the T. cruzi, not only in Brazil, but around the world. And it follows the pattern of vulnerable poverty regions that are characteristic of the social reality of those persons living with Chagas disease. These are two extremely relevant aspects that need to be considered in the current situation. Chagas disease is a curable disease if it's treated appropriately. And accordingly, we can prevent disease progression and improve the quality of life. And this is an essential factor because vertical transmission of the pathogen, mother-child transmission can be prevented. So today, when we celebrate the World Chagas Disease Day, which is an essential day, it is a call to raise awareness and make all efforts to strengthen treatment for 75% of all eligible persons. And to conclude, in spite of all the social aspects that are extremely com complex in Chagas disease, an essential component of treatment is access to health services and strengthen treatment because social inequalities not only are unfair, but can be prevented and can be corrected with measures made by the health care system. And I would like to conclude thanking everyone, all health providers that are working in the follow-up and research on disease, because we have to thing that is a very important disease not only in Brazil and across the world can be a disease of the past. Thank you. Thank you very much for the messages by Ambassador Maria Jesus Collier, by Mrs. Maria Angela Simone. We apologize for the technical issues and we thank you for your important messages now. I'll invite for a brief comment, Dr. Flavio Vernick from the Ministry of Health Department of Press on behalf of Hiroga. The head of the Senior Health Department, Marcelo Quiroga, I want to congratulate all of the participants, especially the Executive Director, the President of Fio Cruz, Dr. Nicia Trindade Lima. I want to congratulate and thank Fio Cruz and Unitaid to organize that we have today when we include Chagas disease in its portfolio, we pick off essential parts of the bilateral relationship in the And this international association will uh, and let us support development that in that favorites have HIV AIDS. And had two drugs next 
generation here for the so the internet will contribute to his special global that's this new light as the one country this the presence with the disease out of which it a thousand newborn Out of which eight thousand people financial counterparts with four million. Initiative in August disease and America. This is the first. Lemon fly to and being the unite. That is that is and it's that our foundation and this was people presenting such this need to overcome. Uh, very here today. I made my own to provide. Today, I in and I did yes I would of me Roga is currently with 
participate in this opening by a very day with you to Dr. Lovely to crew who's met in it. He participated no in feels a lot of that he wanted but also the health phase ultimately scientific challenges and I would like to pay and we welcome the initiative and today there is an entry bring it to words And how this is a symbolic Ministério da Saúde. Queremos agradecer firmemente aos Ministérios da Saúde da Bolívia, da Colômbia e do Paraguai por acreditarem neste projeto e por verem a possibilidade de uma construção conjunta em parceria desta iniciativa. A nós da Fiocruz cabe esse papel de coordenação, mas sem a, a participação equânime de todos, é impossível chegarmos ao nosso objetivo. Sebastian Fumal, we would not be able to reach your goal. Thank you. I would also like to mention the institutions that make up the consortium next to Fiocruz, with the strong support of UNITAID and the Ministry of Health in Brazil, we have the National Institute of Labs in Bolivia, the National Institute of Health from Colombia, the National Service uh, for the Eradication of Paludism, Sanepa in Paraguay, 
and the International NGO Foundation for Innovative New Diagnosis, FIND, also playing a very important role because diagnosis is a central issue in this enterprise. Together, we'll be responsible for this project. I'm quite sure it will bring about significant benefits to all those affected by Chagas disease, especially in Latin America, but certainly it will bring learning experiences for the whole continent. I would like to mention the action of the scientific community from all the countries who had their lives dedicated to understanding and resolving Chagas disease matters and uh, developing public health initiatives that are important in our countries. Thinking about the Brazilian community, I would like to remember once again, the emerit researchers, José Rodríguez Coura from the Osvaldo Cruz Institute and Dr. Zilton Andrade from the Gonzalo Muniz Institute, our Fiocruz in Bahia. In their name and in the name of all researchers and public health workers from all over the world who remain strong in this endeavor to fight against Chagas disease in the world. This is the dream that started with Carlos Chagas and that we remember once more this April 14 and uh, every April 14 from now on. We hope one day we'll be able to say that this challenge has been overcome. And uh, we hope no more people will be affected by this disease one day. I will, um, was honored to be in Geneva on the first day in which the World Chagas Disease Day was approved by the World Health Organization. I received warm greetings from different colleagues, such as Javier Sancho from the Chagas Coalition, who asked me to send his greetings from, on his behalf, and Pedro Baja from the WHO dedicated to neglected diseases. These are figures who, alongside our researchers, have their lives dedicated to this disease, named after one of the greatest Brazilian scientists, who was also a major advocate of overcoming inequalities and public health policies that promote quality of life for all Brazilian men and women and for all the peoples in the world. Thank you so much. I wish you a fruitful event and let us go on together on this journey under the inspiration of masters such as Dr. Zilton Andrade, Coda, and Carlos Chagas. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Nizia. I came in rapidly on the YouTube channel and I see that several people say we're complaining about sound issues. I'd like to check once again to see if the sound is okay. They're saying they can't hear on the YouTube. On YouTube, can you hear? Well, anyway, I'm going to continue. This event is being recorded and it will be available on the YouTube channel of uh, Fiocruz. I do hope these technical issues will be corrected. Virtual events increase participation. We have more than 300 people watching. This would not have been possible in a presential event, but we are unfortunately subject to the peculiarities of online meetings. We'd like to thank you all who are here today with us. 
And we'd like to invite now the Vice President of Research and Biological Collections of Fiocruz, Dr. Rodrigo Correa, to coordinate the lecture Fiochagas, 20 Years of Achievements and Current Challenges, which will be given by the researcher of IOC, Fiocruz, and coordinator of Fiochagas, Dr. André Luis Hockey. Thank you, Inés. Good morning. Good morning, President Nizia. Good morning, participants. I'd like to greet all the public figures and participants. Fio Chagas is a program from the Santa Cruz Foundation, joining all researchers who are somehow working with Chagas disease. The program was created as an integrated program for Chagas disease with a group of researchers. Dr. Giovanni Casinelli was the leader in Chagas disease with Fiocruz. Unfortunately, he left us this year. And I'd like to pay homage also to Dr. Zilton and Coda, who are pioneers and contributed so very significantly. This program was enjoyed a project led by Giovanni Gazzinelli, Dr. Araujo Jorge, and myself. And for 20 years, he promoted the growth, the growth that allowed this project together with uh, Fiocruz and Unitaid, which will be launched this day. Now this program, will have a sound structure, very well organized, not only with the clinical research and lab structures, but also for diagnosis, etc. We'll have a significant program in the social area, working with vectors, which has good coverage in fighting Chagas disease for its control and elimination. It is a strong program and the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, which has strong external participation with the foreign and national partners. And now with the pandemic of SARS-CoV-2 affecting our patients, this study becomes even more complex. I agree with Zé Paulo when he says that the current situation is dramatic in Brazil with so many lives being lost to the pandemic. Without further ado, I'm here representing the program. And I'd like to speak a little bit more about the Chagas disease program. Thank you all and have a fruitful event. Thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, for your kind presentation. I'd like to greet you all. I need to share my presentation. The YouTube transmission is only going to the interpreters. So I'm going to remove my camera and try to share the screen. Can you tell me if it's okay? Can you see my screen? Yes, Andre. Bom dia, então, gostaria mais uma vez de saudar os. Well, good morning. Once again, I'd like to greet all members of the opening table and the participants. I am honored to coordinate the participation of your Chagas. 
It is the symbol of representation of carriers and professionals and the population at large. Now they are seeing one of uh, the most neglected diseases under the spotlight. André, desculpa. É, Nízia, por favor, pre é, presente, é, o seu som está aberto. Eu peço, só lembrando a todos que estão conectados, por gentileza, para mutar. Eu não sei se o, se o pessoal da, da técnica pode fazer isso, mutar todo mundo, por favor. Obrigada. Desculpa, André, a interrupção. Sem, sem problema. Bom, o atual programa transnacional de well, doenças de Chaves, trans 2000, um ano de centenário da, da Fiocruz, a partir de uma iniciativa institucional que havia sido lançado quatro anos antes e que buscava a integração entre diferentes unidades, diferentes grupos de pesquisa da Fiocruz. Então, como o Rodrigo já antecipou, de um projeto aprovado e desenvolvido entre, principalmente, o Instituto Oswaldo Cruz e o Instituto René Rachu, que é a Fiocruz Minas, nasce como legado o Programa Integrado de Pesquisa em Doença de Chagas da Fiocruz, PIDC. O primeiro encontro ele vai acontecer no interior do Rio, do, do Rio em Cachoeira do Macacu, e reúne 71 pesquisadores de 21 laboratórios diferentes e cinco diferentes unidades distintas da Fiocruz. São três dias com muita discussão, definição de, de temas prioritários, sendo de, e, e é, divisão em três oficinas de trabalho, uma de biomarcadores de progressão em doença de Chagas, outra de vetores e uma de diagnóstico de tipagem molecular e filogenia. E uma frase proferida pelo nosso saudoso professor Cora fica marcado nesse encontro e, e torna-se quase que um, um mantra do Fio Chagas. A Fiocruz não detém o um monopólio de pesquisa em doença de Chagas no Brasil, mas pode ter seu protagonismo. A tríade definida naquele momento viria a guiar todos os demais encontros. Integração ficou definida como a palavra-chave do grupo. Networking, a partir de uma agenda periódica de reuniões do programa e comunicação, através principalmente de uma webpage que pudesse nos aproximar ao portador, profissionais da área e população em geral. O PDC é então organizado em três redes de cooperação, uma rede de medicamentos terapêuticos em ensaios clínicos, uma de taxonomia de vetores e ecologias do ciclo de transmissão de tecruze e uma de diagnóstico, evolução clínica e patogênese. O segundo encontro seria realizado apenas cinco anos depois, em 2005, paralelo ao tradicional encontro da do, do, tradicional congresso da Sociedade Brasileira de Protozoologia em Caxambu. O PDC está então mais fortalecido desse encontro com a criação de seis redes temáticas para maior interação de pesquisa e um foco na articulação de projetos que buscasse captar financiamento e gerar inovação em doença de Chagas. Esse encontro também é decisivo porque a partir de 2005 o Fio Chagas passa a ter um gestor para o programa e contar com financiamento de encontros anuais englobando duas vértices da tríade estabelecida cinco anos antes, integração e network. Integration and networking. A partir de 2006, After the 2006, uh, we had 14 presidential meetings in addition to the virtual meeting held last year. The PIDC format remained the same until 2015 and it was incorporated to its integrated programs. We started being recognized as the transnational program in, of research in Chagas disease, Fio Chagas. The third axis of our triad communication started its consolidation after 2006 with the, the setting up of a group of a working group that started the portal, an academic portal published in three different languages as an online book with sections addressing the disease itself, parasite, vectors, and reservoirs. In 2013, stimulated by Findeshagas, Dr. José de Lamens started a cycle of um, talks with undergraduate and graduate students. More recently, in 2017, we had the launch of the new Chagas portal, a website that is focusing on people affected by the disease with uh, reference centers and uh, health agents participating, but always like an online book. 
It has more than 55,000 accesses since 2017. And we've been working on this. We wish to do the translation also in Spanish, uh, in addition to Portuguese. One of the landmark issues was the organization of the celebration of the 100 years of the discovery of the disease in 2009, with more than 750 participants, including 27 international speakers, almost 50 nationals, and more than 300 papers being presented. Two other landmarks occurred that year with the participation of integrants of the Ustavid, with uh, the memoirs dedicated to Chagas disease and uh, the launch of books, stories and perspectives in the 100 year celebration, with 15 classical papers being published. Alongside the years, Fio Chagas grew and incorporated new actors. Fio Cruz, with more than different uh, research centers and labs, the success of the 2009 symposium. After that, we had representatives from the Ministry of Health and uh, Health Surveillance Units participating in 2009 and 10. Also, we had the beginning of the participation of different partners, such as the International Federation of uh, Carriers and uh, Doctors Without Frontiers, in addition to biomarkers and the coalition, Coalition Chagas. Among them, several macro projects, such as the Salen, Olho Vivo no Barbeiro, Ciencia na Estrada, and the work of two ordinary researchers who left us, Dr. Coda and Dr. Virginia. The maturity, so to speak, of your shadows goes through two different phases. The first nine meetings until 2012, where the PIDC is organized in six different theme networks, as listed here. Drugs, taxonomics, diagnosis, physiopathogenics, and education. By 2009, WHO had already been created for in vitro testing, and it's still active today in uh, Belo Horizonte. The second phase of Fiochaga is characterized in the last seven meetings, started with the organization of macro projects, with a focus on the carrier and uh, trying to meet the demands presented by society incorporating as a mission being the protagonist and uh, a benchmark with the Ministry of Health. The macro projects, the result of these two meetings, were proposed by the Ministry of Health, and it had two main axes of prevention and control of Chagas, acute Chagas disease, especially in uh, rural areas, and then integral health uh, service to carriers. We see that the program has been focusing on these uh, main lines since then. Fio Chagas started then uh, acting as a transnational research center, focusing on integrated work. We see the new portal as being uh, one of the main achievements and uh, a relationship with Finda Chagas, a course for carriers which stimulated the association of Rio Chagas. Also, we see the fight to set up the World Chagas Disease Day. Since 2015, it had been acclaimed, and now we are celebrating it. During that period, we had the DNDI platform becoming stronger. It is a platform for new drugs. And also, Fiocruz researchers participate on the second Brazilian consensus and the PCDT in 2018, in addition to the participation and discussions and actions that were in place at Fio Chagas since 2013, which led to the inclusion of Chagas in the national list for mandatory notification. Integration projects, Integra Chagas, and Espresso Chagas are also constant discussions during our meetings. In 2013, the education project from Pará 
in a partnership with the Secretary of Health of the state of Pará, we had physical, uh, practical courses that were held in two days, trying to train nurses and doctors for the integral treatment of acute or chronic stage Chagas disease in the public health system. We held four courses already in 2018 and 2019. Now we'll have also courses in Santarém. These are the municipalities that are most reporting, most often reporting Chagas disease. We had in total 217 professionals trained, including 56 doctors. We wish to expand this to other regions, but considering that these are presential courses, we are having problem organizing courses. One of the most recent products is KitNat Chagas, a multiplex kit for PCR in real time for the detection of low amounts of uh, T. cruzet. It detects 100% of sensitivity and specificity when uh, compared to the uh, OBUS consensus. It is good for the control of therapeutic failure and monitoring of parasitic uh, load. This is a product that was discussed in 2010 already in the diagnosis of the IDC uh, course leveraged in a partnership between uh, Biomanguinhos, Oswaldo Cruz, and the IBMP in Curitiba. The registration with the visa will be subject, uh, will be approved recently, we believe, and it is being used for the monitoring in uh, patients being treated with bisol and also children. Also, we have the TR Chagas serum kit which uses two recombinant chimeric proteins in patients in the chronic phase of the disease with clear applicability for serum screening. This was the result of years of research between Gonzalo Muniz Institute, the Biomanguinhos Institute, IBMP, and Carlos Chagas in Paraná. Registration with Anvisa was uh, granted in July last year. So this kit is part of the portfolio of Biomanguinhos. A multi-center studies on there. The TR Chagas with other kits has been reported and results are being finalized and it will be available soon. Recently, we also identified the need for updating the register of teams working with Chagas disease in Fiocruz. So, to reach that objective, we sent a questionnaire and uh, answers and responses were organized. We have 113 researchers from 16 Fiocruz units, 30 reference labs or labs that provide some type of service to the health secretariat. We have 27 ongoing or concluded projects, which will result in patent requests, and 45 teams involved in scientific uh, research and production. 2020 and 2021 establishes a new challenge in virtual meetings. It's a new dynamic, and uh, it may, on the other hand, expand participation. Today, we have more than 300 people participating. So in this first meeting, of feel shot is totally virtual was marked by the opening meeting, a talk about the 20 years and uh, honors uh, and tributes to those who passed away in the previous year and the plans. And uh, these, this event is available on YouTube. You may watch. We had two days of activities, first a plenary and then a breakout groups in four groups, focusing on epidemiology, surveillance, innovation and development, information, education and communication for health promotion activities, of course, with COVID as the cross-cutting topic. And we organized a debate on the progress made, conquests in the 
program and areas that still have to be focused on. Well, the 20 years in the future are the topic of our agenda. We meet every 15 days, and we are currently working on an action plan for field shagas with goals, action, accountable parties, deadlines, and expected results that will be defined in the meeting held last year. Well, let me give you some spoilers of what uh, expects us. We will have a specific prospection for agenda of outhouse activities, digital information, COVID chagas, hybrid molecules, a brand name, and new communication platforms. Uh, let's be together in this road ahead in the next 20 years. On behalf of all the team at FIO Chagas, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Andre. Thank you very much. Rodrigo, would you like to make any other comments? I would like to thank Andre for the fantastic presentation. They're telling us all of the history and the track record of FIO Chagas the history of the program, which is a very successful program. And in, in these 20 years of duration of the program, together with the background and track record of your crews, we have created this fantastic program, Fio Chagas. And we have reached this fantastic moment that was shared with us all in the words of President Messia, and I congratulate everybody involved. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. So now we will proceed with our agenda, and I invite the researcher of the National Infectology Institute, Ivan Roshagas, here at FIO Cruz, and main researcher of Chagas project, Dr. Andrea Silvestre, that will talk about the Quida Chagas project, which is a partnership between Fiat Cruz, Unitaid, and the Ministry of Health of Brazil. Andrea, you have the floor. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Maria Inés. Good morning, Nisia. Hello to the presidency of Fiat Cruz, members of the consortium, members of this alliance, representatives from Brazil and abroad. And today, at this essential moment, I would like to welcome and congratulate everybody in this partnership, everybody from Fio Cruz, the Ministry of Health, and Unitaid. Well, I have shared my screen. Can you see my presentation on the screen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, this is an historic date. It is an honor for us here at Fio Cruz to celebrate the day of today, World Chagas Disease Day. And we are here with the launching of the strategic project that is created in line with a global target to eliminate Chagas disease as a public health problem by 2030 through important UNTAID funding and with contributions from the Ministry of Health of Brazil, we expect to reduce transmission of Chagas disease in vertical transmission, mothers and newborns, eliminating vertical transmission of the disease indirectly, but of course, as important, early detection and access to treatment increases possibilities of cure in children and adolescents will reduce the quantity of heart failure, hospitalization, and deaths related to Chagas disease. I will present to you all, ladies and gentlemen, in a summarized version for the first time, the project Cuida Chagas, which is, you know, communities in the elimination of Chagas disease. So this consortium Chagas was created, supported by the ministries of health of Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, and Paraguay, together with the technical support of the World Health Organization and the Pan-American Health Organization, 
as well as the active participation of civil society represented today in this meeting with the support of the International Federation of Persons Living with Chagas Disease, Affin de Chagas, coordinated by the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation and FIOTEC. This Chagas Consortium has international partners, the International Institute of Laboratories LASA in Bolivia, the International Institute of Health in Colombia, and the National Health of Eradication of Malaria Sinep in Paraguay, as well as FIND, an NGO, BNDI, DNDI, that has worked in the initial stages of the project, and other NGOs that are currently working as collaborators in this consortium. The project will be implemented in 32 municipalities selected in the fourth countries. 10, 10 in Bolivia, five in Brazil, two in Colombia, five in Paraguay to guarantee within the diversity of parasitic context and so social and economic environments, primary healthcare with the primary focus of intervention to implement integrated action with pre-existed initiative that involve reproductive, mother, neonatal, pediatric health, as well as other initiatives. It is estimated that there are 60,000 women in fertile age groups in selected areas that would be assessed in the four years of the project 240 thousand women. The general goal of the project with the Chagas is to contribute to the elimination of vertical transmission of Chagas disease by scaling up and enhances access to diagnosis, treatment, and comprehensive care through innovative and sustainable approaches in Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, and Paraguay. The project will have two main pillars with implementation together with diagnosis initiatives and treatment in each country to increase access through an integrated strategy to test, take care, and cure with rapid tests for the follow-up of chronic patients and molecular bio biology for congenital Chagas disease together with very careful counseling provided by trained healthcare professionals. Two innovative studies will be performed in the First, with new diagnostic algorithms based in rapid tests that will be assessed to make the diagnosis of Chagas disease in primary care settings easier. A new schedule with short bisnitazol treatment will be tested in a randomized phase three clinical study, placebo-controlled trial. So there are five main out outputs. Evidence will be generated on effective tests, treatment care approaches through the implementation of research. Community and civil society commitment at local, national, and regional levels will increase the demand of services and advocate for the integration of recommended approaches for Chagas disease in policies, strategies, and plans. Diagnostic algorithms will be validated for chronic and congenital Chagas disease. And evidence generated on improved treatment options will be made available. To conclude, market modeling and supply chain interventions will be implemented to ensure equitable access to innovative products. We estimate that by 2025, around 240,000 will women in fertile age group, their children and newborns and relatives in households will be actively tested. Global investment will be equivalent to the value saved by health services in the four countries of the consortium with a strengthened regional collaboration initiative. Indirect impact will be felt in the whole of Latin America with fantastic savings of regional healthcare services. Once again, I thank Unit 8 and Ministry of Health's funds that will give us the possibility to implement this fantastic and extraordinary project, the support of the presidency of Fiocruz. 
in the presence of our vice presidents and the field tech and the confidence of our consortium partners, ministries of health in Bolivia, Colombia, and Paraguay. Thank you very much for your trust. Each one of the collaborators in the different countries of all field crews units involved, Brazilian universities, and all of those that participated in this project. My very special thank to our magic group, those that were very focused, Marcos Benedetti, Thiago Neri, Renata, Clarissa, and especially Debbie. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your support. I feel honored to launch this project. Now, I will invite the members of the consortium to make some comments. First, Dr. Gabriel Para, Vice Director of Innovation and Public Health of the National Institute of Health, primary investigator of the project in Colombia. Andrea, I apologize, just one minute. Please, could you stop sharing your screen? Andrea, sorry for the interruption. Andrea, can I start? Yes, thank you very much, Gabriel. You can start. Well, good morning. Greetings on behalf of the General Director of the National Institute of Health, Dr. Marta Auspina on behalf of all the colleagues from the National Health Institute in Colombia. For us, it is a great honor to participate in this consortium. We recognize the support of UNITAID. We thank and recognize the support by the presidency of FIO Cruz, FIO Tech. Under your leadership, we could make this dream and project come true. It is a very ambitious project and necessary, timely for a region. In Colombia, we as National Health Institute and as health authorities, we have made progress with different research studies in Chagas disease and we have supported the national program that is supported by the Andean Initiative for more than 20 years now. We have to acknowledge the Andean Initiative that was the first step towards information on epidemiology in Chagas disease of, in the Andean region in South America. We should also acknowledge the work carried out by the Colombian Institute of Tropical Medicine at that time, Simpad from the Andes University and Sintrop from the Industrial Santander University. So that project was the first step in a clear path forward to restate and make available the information on Chagas in Colombia specifically. And from that moment on, a lot of activities have been developed through the Ministry of Health here in Colombia. These projects and activities have resulted in a fantastic task carried out to interrupt domiciliary transmission of T. cruzi for Domius prolixus. So the Ministry of Health has really made fant fantastic progress. And we have even made progress with diagnostic algorithms in our country. And we have also made progress in transmission scenario scenarios, vector transmission, but we have to recognize that congenital Chagas in Colombia needs more initiatives. And there have been few publications carried out on congenital Chagas. So this initiative, this consortium will fill this gap in Colombia, as is the case elsewhere in the region. We have to work together with local communities 
in the most remote areas of the region. And we welcome, we really welcome this project, this initiative. It is a tremendous challenge, but there are a number of institutions, friends, colleagues that will work hard to fulfill our commitment. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you all from the National Health Institute in Colombia. Of course, I'm sure that we will be very successful in this initiative. Now, I give the floor to Dr. Hernan Rodriguez, General Director of Sanepa, Paraguay. Dr. Rodriguez, you have the floor. Hello, good morning. Hello, head table, all the authorities. And on behalf of Minister Julio Borba, that unfortunately is not here with us today, that strongly supports this initiative. Paraguay is a country that throughout its history, and especially as far as the goals are concerned in public health, has had different success cases. And I would like to mention uh, our success cases with Chagas disease. In 2018, Chagas disease was declared, Paraguay was declared a country with the interruption of the victorial household transmission of T. cruzi as a consequence of this achievement. Uh, we have to really be committed and responsible to uphold this status, this privilege that we hold. It is very difficult. I guess it's more difficult to sustain the situation than to achieve the situation, because when a population in a country uh, and when the disease is declared as interrupted, uh, not only uh, the population, but also healthcare professionals sometimes forget about uh, having an active surveillance of the disease. So Paraguay is currently in a stage in which we have to focus on initiatives, control diagnosis and treatment. That is, Cuida uh, Chagas is a very timely initiative and we are very thankful for the initiative the sponsors and the creators because the early diagnosis and prevention of vertical transmission is an essential stage we are currently working on in public health here in Paraguay. So I'm really very happy and I welcome this initiative for me. It's an uh, honor to be here with you today celebrating and I'm certain that we will be successful, we will achieve our goals, and we will be able to prevent victorial transmission of T. cruzi, that is the causative agent of the disease. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, my best regards, and we are together in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Hernan. Thank you, everybody at CENEPA. Thank you, our friends from Paraguay, and, and you really participated strongly in the organization of this project. Thank you, Senepa. Thank you, everybody from Paraguay. Well, I, we will wait till Bolivia um, connects itself. And I now I give the floor to Dr. Marta Fernandez Suarez, research and uh, development head at FIND. Thank you. Thank you, Fio Cruz, for the invitation. We at FIND feel honored to be part of this initiative and be part of the Cuida Chagas initiative. FIND is a Geneva-based organization with a mission to guarantee uh, reliable diagnostic tools all over the world. We work to focus innovation innovation in diagnostics and to try to make a cure part of comprehensive and resilient health care systems. Find due to COVID-19 included together with Global Fund, together with the struggle against AIDS, malaria, and TB. We work with UNITAID, uh, WH, 
Chico and Tapajo, and we have made available a lot of funds to fight for these initiatives in low-income countries. We know that uh, clinical diagnosis have been forgotten and they have little financing opportunities. Nevertheless, things are changing and COVID-19 really has underscored the value of clinical diagnosis. And we believe that we need to work harder on this initiative. The new roadmap of the World Health Organization for Neglected Tropical Diseases focuses on diagnostic tests as a critical component. And we have to focus on this if we want to fulfill the objectives of the 2030 Agenda. Quida Chagas is a unique opportunity to develop and implement new strategies of congenital Chagas disease diagnostics. We know diagnostics are key to identify and screen uh, patients and persons living with Chagas, but especially those that we want to focus on uh, migrant populations, indigenous people, women, pregnant women, children, which are vulnerable populations that have access difficulties to healthcare services. So that is the reason why this consortium is essential. And we have to increase the use of rapid tests. Rapid tests are essential to increase access. There are many rapid tests for Chagas available in the market, but we don't have enough data to approve their performance so the WHO cannot recommend them and they can't be implemented. That is the reason why FIND will work with its partners in the Quidditch Consortium to assess existing rapid tests as well as new diagnostic strategies to generate jet data that can support the implementation of these rapid tests. We believe that to have a comprehensive approach of uh, tests and treatment with the essential support of the governments of Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, and Paraguay, Quita Chagas project is an essential step forward for the elimination of congenital Chagas disease. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Marta. Thank you, everybody at FIND that have worked so hard with us to implement this project now. I will give the floor to Maria Rene Castro, Vice Ministry of Approval Health, Epidemiological Surveillance and Traditional Medicine in Bolivia representing our partner, Lasse, from Bolivia. Andrea, it is a pleasure to be with you today. My name is Maria Rene Castro, the Vice Ministry of Health of the state of plurinational country of Bolivia. I'm from Enlasa, and it's an honor to be here with you this morning to launch and hold uh, our World Chagas Disease Day. We have made a lot of efforts in our country, and I would like to share with you all that us, before 2006, people living with Chagas that were the ones that had to pay for their visit and pay for their own treatment, now we have a universal health system that takes care of Chagas uh, patients so that diagnosis and treatment are totally free of charge. We have made tremendous forward. More than 500,000 pregnant women have uh, free of charge a serological tests, and pregnant women have been identified with T. cruzi infection and 14.9% of prevalence in pregnant women are the figures that we have published with our research information, but we have been able to establish 332 healthcare centers for treatment and diagnosis. So these healthcare sets, uh, centers are located in the departments of the country, not only in endemic locations, but also to assess migrant cases. Other than that, we have been able to provide free of charge care for newborns from infected women with 280,000 children that were born from mothers with Chagas that have been tested with lab and clinical tests. T. cruzi infected newborns. We have 276 children infected by T. cruzi have received specific treatment free of charge and we have also been full, uh, able to have a 68% treatment coverage. That is, we're making tremendous progress in the coverage, both from 
public health and epidemiological perspectives, we have been able to work and control vertical and congenital transmission. And we are focusing on this in endemic and non-endemic locations. Of the 155 endemic municipalities in my country, with T infestants, 126 successfully interrupted vector transmission. Out of these 126, 24 municipalities have been certified by PAHO and by other entities that there has been an eradication of the vector. So we are really very happy to contribute and to work on these initiatives. We know how important it is that such an important a uh, disease, a silent disease or a neglected disease has to be placed in the agenda of public health initiatives in all of the countries. It is an honor to work with you and the teams of partner countries to share information, share scientific, technological studies, sharing methodologies and protocols needed so that jointly we can make progress as sister countries. We from Bolivia are still trying to increase and improve coverage of screening and treatment of pain. La población a través de la aplicación de nuevos enfoques que sean sostenibles en el tiempo. Hoy nos estamos uniendo con Bolivia, Brasil, Colombia y Paraguay como países hermanos, países de la región all the importance to Bolivia, Brazil, and Paraguay so that we can fulfill this project that is so important with United Communities for the implementation of different initiatives to eradicate Chagas disease. We're fully committed to make all efforts necessary. And now I am in the place where I have worked for more than five years as the director of the National Institute of Health Laboratories. And today I am here in this place, which is my home, to work together with my friends and colleagues that have been working in Chagas. These professionals, we are all committed. All of us are totally committed and we are fully committed to give the best of our professional careers to this initiative. We are aware of the fact that the starting point is research. I am a molecular biologist. Research is essential. Scientific updating is essential. And this is the vision that we have right now as a country. Education on this topic will be a cornerstone to work with different communities, our authorities, with INLASA, we are part and we welcome all of our participants. We know that we need to cooperate amongst countries. We have identified for this project 10 different municipalities in four different departments to focus on all the initiatives that are related to treatment and screening needs to improve healthcare access. We have a lot of experience with molecular biology, real-time molecular biology and uh, conventional molecular biology. We have worked together with lab technologies and microarrays. We are working and making a lot of progress in these molecular biology test areas. So updating diagnostic tools will help us and support us in all of the initiatives to fight against all biological agents. We are trying to create necessary evidence to provide effective diagnosis, timely treatment, and appropriate treatment for our population. I would like to thank you all for giving me and giving us the opportunity of being part of this consortium of this team for working with sister countries united in this important initiative. We know that we are currently going through a very complex situation with coronavirus, but we can't forget the other diseases that are also silently evolving. Yes, there are priorities, there are emergencies. Yes, it's true, but we need to focus on our initiatives with Chagas disease and other neglected diseases. So please receive our warmest welcome, our warmest greetings. Our minister is a fighter of all scientific issues here in Bolivia, and it has been fantastic that our president supports us in such a fantastic way in every initiative. So I 
thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you from Enlasa. Thank you, all the friends from Bolivia. Uh, Jorge from Enlasa, hello. You have worked with us. Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. So now it is an honor to give the floor to Juanda Gomez that will talk on behalf of Finde Chagas. She is the head of the Association of People Living with Chagas, Heart Failure and Cardiopathies from Recife. Finde Chagas is the oldest association of people living with Chagas disease, and she will talk officially representing Finde Chagas. Duanda, you have the floor. Hello, I am Joanda Gomez de Araujo. I am 53 years old. I was born in Timbauba, Pernambuco State. I live in Marawal, the uh, area, forest area in Pernambuco. I'm a patient from the outpatient unit in Pernambuco, where I also work as a volunteer. And my saga started when I was nine years old. I was working in sugarcane plantation. I was also working as a babysitter and I was always sick. I was feeling fatigue and uh, I was not feeling well at all. I was inexperienced. I was a child and at 12 years old, I fainted. I had a pacemaker being placed, Chagas disease, so I was home, I couldn't work. Then I started my treatment and I started, I started helping in the Chagas disease outpatient unit where patients are there and they need information. So I learned over the years to take care of my pacemaker and take the necessary medication. And suddenly here we are in this memorable day with this project for mothers. I got pregnant and I didn't know what to do. The exam pregnant women have today was not available at the time. I have two daughters. They are women now, grown women. They never had the exam taken. That was their option. They didn't want to have it, to have to be tested. But fortunately, thank God, I was uh, treated. And here I am, 53 years old, representing this beautiful project. This is wonderful. So what I have to say is that this project will help mothers, those mothers who were there. And that is because if they are pregnant, they will not suffer. And if it's the case, they might help their babies and themselves. And also, And the leaders, United, and the association, in Chagas. Here we are in the association of the people affected by Chagas. It started very small under a tree, and suddenly we expanded. We reached all over the place. And we're representing all these women who got pregnant, who are carriers of Chagas, but they're okay. What about their daughters? Won't they be able to be tested? Won't they be able to do prevention? And when they're pregnant, their babies will be saved from this, will be free from it. So I'd like to extend my thanks to this team, the team that fought for this because to reach this place 
it all started with one person. Actually, it's two people because I don't want to be mean, Dr. Wilson and Dr. Cassandra. Because back there, Dr. Wilson, he was studying and Dr. Cassandra also studying and teaching us. It wasn't by chance, I started learning from them. And the value of being a volunteer was learned from them. Here I am representing these girls and the mothers of these girls. So they don't suffer what I suffered back then. If I had had the treatment as a girl, I would be free from it now, right? I have Chagas disease. I wear a pacemaker. I have the digestive also and the esophagus and megaesophagus type of disease as well, not only the cardiac type. So if I had been treated back then, I would be free from it. So once more, I thank you all, Fiocruz and the Finda Chagas Association, the Ministry of Health, United, I'd like to thank you all. I'd like to send you a virtual hug. It is my thanks to you, Joanda Gomez de Araújo, who lives in the inlands of Pernambuco State in Brazil. I am so very grateful to all of you. I apologize you for my humble words. I'm very grateful. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Joanda. Your words are very significant. And the history of your life says so much about it. With the chronic chagasic myocardia and digestive uh, chronic disease, got pregnant and could not be diagnosed appropriately as we envisage to have from this point on. If you, the project had been there then, you would not have had the progression of your disease. That's why we're here. Thank you so much for your words. We hope Professor Wilson and Dr. Christina and everyone who's supporting you there, thank you for your words. The future president of Hinde Chagas. May I just ask to add something? Dr. Christina, I would really want everyone to see you. Without her, I wouldn't be here. Just a bit. Thank you so much. I kiss you from afar. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Joanda. Well, we'll continue now with Dr. Heine Felipe, the director of Fiotech, the support foundation and this uh, foundation corporate cooperated greatly with us, Dr. Heinen. Well, good morning, everyone. I would like to greet Dr. Andrea Silvestre. And in doing so, I'd like to greet you all. I believe everything that matters has already been said about the project. It is an honor to be part of this project because of its social and scientific relevance. We just uh, listened to Joanda's words. That's very touching. Fiotech, as a support foundation of Fiocruz, has as its mission the uh, joint uh, sharing of projects aiming at innovation in health. So we are very proud to be here, to be able to help and assist with our experience. We have experience with other projects with UNITAID also. And in the end, we aim at obtaining these innovations and in doing so, contribute not only to the countries involved in the pro project consortium, but also to the brother countries who are still being affected by this disease. We hope this is a trigger, a leverage, a way of leveraging the scientific discussion, but also social determinants of health. So we may have true quality of life improvement in our continent. And look at how much we depend on technology with uh, the COVID pandemic. So Fiotech is totally mobilized and engaged with the mission of doing its very best 
will always try to assist and help so that this project is successful. Thank you, Dr. Andrea, and thank you all, those who participated in the project. I cannot name all the people involved, so I'd like to thank you all by thanking Dr. Andrea. We obtained this funding, so congratulations. Let's roll up our sleeves and as of May, start doing the job. Thank you, Dr. Heine. Special thanks to Fiotech, Luis, Lidiane, and the whole team working directly with us. It was to certainly an intense and very rewarding work. Now I'd like to call Pedro Albahar, representing the WHO, for his comments. Well, good morning. Nisia, president of Fiocruz and Andrea, project coordinator. I'd like to greet all the participants in this meeting. I have three comments, three main reflections. First of all, thinking about Dr. Koda, it was a very rewarding and touching. And also Dr. Zoltan, who I admire so much. In doing so, I think about our responsibility. We are actors, players in this moment, along a biological history of thousands of years since the arrival of human beings to the Americas and how they interacted with the salvatic cycle of Chagas disease. And we are players in human history. The study of intervention, which began here in this house 102 years ago. The second reflection is that concrete examples of this interaction was due to a paradigm shift three years ago in 2018 with the scientific evidence that treatment, anti-parasitic treatment of childbearing age women and girls interrupts congenital transmission. The approval in November last year of the new script, the new agenda up to 2030, incorporating for the first time the eradication of congenital Chagas disease and the signature today for the implementation of this project launched by UNITAID and the discussion as of next year, next week, 20, April 21st, the summit in Andorra of this uh, meeting for and this program for congenital Chagas disease. And finally, the World Chagas Disease Day, which we celebrate today, which had the support of uh, Fiocruz since its very birth and the creation of the Federation of People Affected. And Professor Koda, it was with him that we organized the first meeting in Uberaba and uh, Casa Oswaldo Cruz helped us find the date. So the topic this year, which is the calling attention to integral health of the affected in the context of the hardship of this pandemic. This was the theme, the topic proposed and which the WHO embraced and accepted. So we have the possibility now of being co-players and co-authors of this history it is up to us to build collectively and responsibly this response as of now in the very beginning of this challenging decade ahead of us. Congratulations and thank you so very much. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your technical support and the construction of this project and in the organization of this World Chagas Day for people affected by Chagas. Because we are a bit late, I'm going to call now Dr. Mauricio Cisne, UNITAID representative for his comments. Unfortunately, he will need, he will have to leave right after his uh, presentation. Hello, Andrea. I apologize. 
I didn't want to force you to get off track, get off the protocol, but we have other things going on here, you know. I'd like to thank you for the invitation. Palavras muito calorosas, tanto da Presidente Nízia como também do Flávio Flávio Werneck and uh, Nisia. But I'd like to greet, first of all, people like Joanda, because they provide a face to our mission. I would also like to greet the partners, because without the partners from Bolivia, Colombia, and Paraguay, we would not be here under the leadership of Fiocruz with this very important project. Special greetings to my friends who were here with us since the very dis first discussion. You, Andrea, know more about the project than I do myself, but I would like to make two brief comments which are strategic politically for us in Brazil, for the region and for Chagas disease. But first of all, I'd like to extend my greetings to Marco Krieger, the VP, a political strength in the project and other people who were in the ministry but are no longer there, researchers who were still involved with Chagas and different uh, friends from the WHO and PAHO, especially my colleague and friend Pedro, who spoke so very eloquently a few minutes ago. Some comments that I believe are important regarding the project, first of all, as an international organization funding global health initiatives, we see, we have seen how this Cuida Chagas project, an apparently small project, is very innovative for two reasons. First of all, we get, got off the axis of the three major infectious uh, pandemic diseases, and uh, we managed to find here room for this large project about an eclectic tropical disease. This is the very first time we do this. So getting off the axis of the three large pandemic diseases in the year 2000, and now focusing on an important WHO agenda for Brazil and other countries, having Pedro at, behind all this for the eradication of Chavez is very important. We bring in the focus not only that it's important, but that is very necessary for us to fund this. The other element to establish whether or not this will be successful is that this will only work if governments are doing their co-funding. If we get the leadership of the Brazilian government through the Ministry of Health providing support to the project, this is essential. What we would like to see as the vice Deputy Minister of Bolivia said, and other partners from uh, Paraguay and Colombia have said, is that we'd like to see this type of commitment in uh, funding so that neglected diseases, in the case of Chagas, can be approached from a, a broader perspective, from a worldwide perspective. And the other element has to do with what Andreas said. And I, to 240,000 women. It sounds like a small figure if we think about 11 million people infected or 100 million people infected or six to seven million infected every year. But considering what the project aims to do, the other figure that Andrea mentioned and that I wrote down is that investments between UNITAID and the Brazilian government will be discounted through treatment and early diagnosis of 240,000 women. But these figures are nothing but the beginning of our project. What we envisage is that in five years, the network will encompass the 21 endemic countries in the region having the support of countries who that do not have endemic Chagas disease, but who are still interested in finding solutions through adequate diagnosis, thus improving treatment. This is also the characteristic of the project that we've been trying 
to do with the acute phase treatment, reducing by half the treatment period from 60 to 30 days. These are the two strategic elements to the project. I'd like to emphasize that the coordinating role of Fiocruz through Andre Aya and also through Chris and Fiocruz regarding sharing experiences in the region and the dissemination and the scope of the project involves not only direct objectives, but indirect objectives. And this is why we are investing. Thank you all. I'd like to greet you all. And I apologize for breaking the protocol. My idea was just to share some ideas. Unitaid and the partnership with Brazil continues strong, not only with Brazil, but with other countries in the region. Thank you, Andrea. See you soon. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you for your words. Certainly, we need to consider the indirect impact for Latin America and the whole region. And on that line, I'd like to give the floor to the representative of PAHO in Washington, Luis Gerardo Cartellanos. The PAHO representative talking about the importance of the regional representation. Dr. Luis. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andrea Silvestri. My warm and respectful greetings from everybody here at this meeting. Hello, and I would like to start off by taking a break and acknowledge this seminar. We're living such a terrible special, such an extended pandemic that has caused such a negative impact specifically in countries in the Americas with number of cases and deaths soaring high. Economic and healthcare systems have collapsed. I think it is so successful and joyful to see so many friends gathered here to talk about a topic that transcends this pandemic that has affected us greatly. And I think we should take a minute to think about this situation. The World Health the Pan American Health Organization is happy and proud of being part of this initiative. And we thank deeply leadership of the institutions involved and that have been supporting the development of this proposal. I believe that it is timely that Dr. Mauricio has mentioned uh, this topic and has spoken before me since he has touched upon an topic that is essential, which is the transcendency of an institution as Unit 8 that has interrupted the tradition of focusing on the three traditional diseases, the ma three major global epidemic, and focus for the first time ever on a unique problem, or that traditionally has been unique of the region of the Americas. Because in the region of the Americas, the Pan American Health Organization has 40 years of history to focus and work supporting countries in the fight against Chagas disease. And even though in the beginning, we talked about 21 endemic countries due to their vectorial transmission back record, it is important to recognize that today, the dispersion and transmission or infection capacity is global, especially with transmissions in vertical and congenital transmission and through blood product contamination. I think it is appropriate to underscore that these last 40 years that the countries of the Americas have devoted to, and especially uh, Brazil and as Madam Vice Minister Castro from Bolivia has mentioned, these 40 years of hard work has made possible that the number of people living in geographical areas exposed to the transmission of Chagas to see by vectors has dropped from 200 million to almost 65 million people. This has been a major achievement. More than 100,000 square kilometers covered with armies of workers 
in all countries involved in the victorial control struggle. So this has laid the foundations for a vision that this consortium, consortium uh, spearheaded by FIOTEC, FIOCRUZ, and the other partner institutions from the governments of the countries in Latin America that are here with us today, this morning, decided to implement the view of uh, really focusing on vertical transmission and launch this initiative. This is very noble. And the challenge of ahead of us is tremendous. And PAHO supports and joins in this initiative with our support in the development and successful implementation of this project in all the countries. So I think that the only thing I can do right now is to congratulate you, Dr. Andrea Silvestri, for your enthusiasm, the technical support, intellectual support, professional support, and leadership that you have established in this consortium and with uh, institutions that, as PAHO, are uh, following this initiative. And I restate the commitment of our organization to support this project, support you and all countries to make successful progress and fulfill your goals. And we, as an organization, we will focus on the possibility of providing and making available all our technical expertise so that in the coming future, we can fulfill the best results possible in this project. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting us from PAHO to be part of this meeting. Thank you, Dr. Castellanos. During the development of this project, I had the honor to represent all Fiocruz researchers, all of those that have spoken today, represented by Andrea Hoke with the representation of Fio Chagas, with the fantastic support of the presidency of Fiocruz. And this support has always been translated in a direct way with a constant and permanent presence of the Vice President of Innovation, Production and Health, Dr. Marco Krieger, that will make the closing remarks. Thank you very much, Krieger, publicly. I would like to thank you for the support for this project. Thank you very, very much. Well, Andrea, thank you very much for your words, kind words. Really, I would like to congratulate the team responsible for the success of this project, all of the collaborators present, all member countries, Colombia, Paraguay, Bolivia, partners from FIOTEC, and the leadership by Andrea should be acknowledged because we're living very difficult moments. We had to relearn how to articulate and organize ourselves. And, and congratulations, Andrea. I, I really feel very happy. I think this is a very special situation because we're living such difficult times, but today is a day to celebrate. We need to celebrate this fantastic step forward that represents the best the best use of scientific knowledge in favor of public health. Chagas disease is a disease that has a tradition that we in Latin America have been able to take advantage of our knowledge and translate this to the benefit of our population. There have been many, many contributions and initiatives. I could mention the uh, fight against the mosquito and the vectors. Uh, we have been able and successfully eliminate active transmission, which was the consequence of the partnership between scientific knowledge and health systems in different countries. We're living a similar moment with, uh, with this success story, and I'm really very happy happy to be part of this uh, important uh, meeting. I really was moved with uh, the homage uh, paid to Dr. Zilton, to Dr. Cora, and there were fantastic comments made by our president, Nisia, and uh, the words mentioned this morning were very, very important with the formal support by Unit Aid. And I would like to thank Maurice Sisney for his participation in this um, project and 
on his behalf, Maurice Sisney, all of the other participants that supported us in this initiative, especially, I was moved because few shagas, I was present at the meeting in Kashwara de Makaku, and this is a fantastic success story, researchers being able to develop new diagnostic methods, fantastic progress made. And I think that this project now is the sum total of all of these initiatives and spirits. It's an innovative proposal with a new approach for screening treatment for pediatric communities, trying to decrease today the great problem that we have with vertical transmission, mother-child transmission, but uh, create evidence on a new way to uh, manage people living with Chagas. So I think that it is essential to have a possibility of implementing such an initiative. And I believe that we have this responsibility. We are accountable for uh, keeping up the selecting work started by Carlos Chaga when he established this disease. And we have great responsibility and our researchers uh, play a, an essential role in the fight against the disease. The example of our forefathers uh, strengthens the importance that we have playing an essential role as researchers, the different institutes in Latin America in resolving their uh, individual problems. So I am really very, very happy that in such difficult circumstances, we're celebrating this World Chagas Disease Day and we're celebrating um, all our good work. And on behalf of Andrea, I congratulate everybody involved in this initiative. I have seen how many effort, uh, how many things have been done, uh, how much effort has been devoted to this initiative for more than one year, so that today we can celebrate. Uh, congratulations to everybody involved on behalf of the presidency of uh, Fio Cruz. I want to congratulate all the colleagues involved in this project. And I would like to tell you that we are really waiting uh, uh, expectantly the results of this project to validate a new approach for Chagas disease. Thank you, Krieger. Thank you, Fio Cruz. Um, undoubtedly, we will need all the institutional support of all the researchers of all the units involved to be successful in the development of this project. Thank you all to all members of the consortium here today. Thank you uh, very much, Unit AIDS, the Ministry of Health, Fio Cruz, and I give the floor to Ines to close this round table in this great and fantastic moment. Andrea, thank you. Thank you very much. This has been a fantastic session. Congratulations to all of our participants in the launching of this project. So we will continue with our meeting this morning. Now we will see the video of the launching of the virtual library on control of triatomites. And I would like to remind you all, please, to mute your microphones if you are not taking the floor. Estamos sem som do vídeo, por favor. The video has no audio sound.
Good morning. It is an honor to launch the Triatomite Control Virtual Library today when we celebrate the World Chagas Disease Day. When we talk about transmission by T. Cruci, we can't avoid talking about control. Historically, we know that Brazil plays an important role in the development of control methodologies of triatomite bugs and through insecticides, human transmission of T. cruzi has really decreased. Nevertheless, due to our biodiversity, there are many spe species of triatomite that infest households. Uh, T. cruzi is one of the major species. So control of triatomite bugs is a challenge for us. The idea of this library is part of the desire to cooperate in these control efforts, making access to information easier. All of the information is available on internet. Other pieces of information are very precious. And this library has documents, articles that can support training of control teams and the planning of their activities. Our proposal is in line with the lab that we have here. And our lab is an integrated network of few crews reference laboratories. And our commitment is to carry out research initiatives, training courses to support the control of the vector of Chagas disease and especially triatomine bugs, which is our expertise. I would like to thank Dr. Pedro Alvaro Pinas that has given us all his support to uh, carry out this initiative. This started as a, a PhD um, initiative with the support of the different faculty members. And Eduardo Viveira, uh, after the initial stage, took on the responsibility. And um, through a partnership, uh, we uh, started the possibility to create our library. Now I give the floor to Eduardo Oliveira that will tell us about the construction plan of our library. And then Luciana will see which is the participation of other departments as SICT in the creation of this virtual library. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, good morning. My name is Eduardo. And after Dr. Lilea's presentation, let me tell you a little bit about the creation of the triatomine bug control library. So the methodology used and the information available in the library is part of the content of my presentation. My project focuses on the possibility of disseminating and organizing all the information on different strategies to fight uh, vectors in Chagas disease, uh, starting from control program initial activities that started in 1940 till 2016, when we started this project. So first, what we did was try to identify all literature in scientific databases. And this process responded to a strategy with five key word groups for a thorough search in these databases. After the first screening, files were identified individually with the title, summary, and if it was the case, we would read full documents. Uh, Sorry for the technical inconvenience. 
com a exibição do vídeo. É, não sei se é melhor a gente dar continuidade depois da toma. Should we carry on with the agenda or we'll resume the transmission? Bom, é, eu acho melhor assim até por conta. Well, I believe that since it's almost midday, we apologize for this inconvenience. And I believe that we can carry out with our schedule. Maybe Dr. Andrea, the coordinator of the next session, will introduce the library, library's video again, because it is an important initiative. And Eduardo Olinea, Please, if you could make available the link for anyone that wants to visit the library. So I give the floor to Dr. Andrea Silvestre, that will be the moderator of this very beautiful activity. I loved the name of this activity, which is in Portuguese, Conscious and Art. Thank you, uh, Inés. Uh, Conscious and Art, which is the name of this project, Conciencia Arte in Portuguese, is one uh, is another uh, project sponsored by the Ministry of Health and um, Partners. And this initiative is part of the initiatives together with the Ministry of Health to raise awareness on Chagas disease in Brazil and the possibility of implementing this feeling, this notion to all partners in Latin America. I will, we will make a, a very quick presentation. I would like to share my screen. What is this pilot project? And I will show the video later on because I believe that it is fun to watch. So let me share with you quickly, which is our Integra Chagas project. Integra Chagas means Chagas Integration Project. Integra Chagas is a strategic project financed by the Ministry of Health in Brazil. And we are supporting this in spite of the current circumstances. And the focus is to increase detection and treatment of Chagas in primary healthcare services. And it is coordinated by the National Chagas Infection Institute, INI, together with the University of Serra. So it is the first time that surveillance, attention, and healthcare initiatives will be implemented and validated in an integrated manner in the country with the support of the National Surveillance Secretary and the Ministry of Health, Chagas disease is a chronic neglected disease that demands broad healthcare services for persons living with Chagas disease in line with our celebration today, the World Chagas Disease Day 2021, that fights for broad and equitative healthcare access for all patients with Chagas disease. We acknowledge there are many barriers to access uh, to a diagnosis, most of them in the level of education. If health professionals and uh, social movements and grassroots movements were engaged and informed, we could change the scenario, which results in uh, less than 10% of diagnosis provided to the population affected. Less than 1%, that's even better, are those treated obtaining cure with prevention to chronic forms of disease, having access to treatment. Unfortunately, diagnosis occurs in the late stages when a chronic disease is already the onset with uh, severe consequences to the family, community, and uh, high costs to public health, together with different movements and strategies for mitigation with rapid uh, screening tests and the assessment of new therapeutic strategies might allow us to expand access. In this sense, Integra Chavez Brazil has as a purpose 
increasing uh, access to detection and treatment of shadows disease in the primary health in Brazil through this research and implementation strategy. As a result, it will have implementations strategies that will be implemented all over Brazil. The municipalities chosen were identified as its priorities by the Ministry of Health by using the index that considers a morbid mortality prevalence as well as access to the primary health services. After being chosen, then necessary agreements occurred with the municipality and state. So, Espinosa and Porteirinha in Minas Gerais, São Desidere in Bahia and Iguarací in Pernambuco states, as well as San Luis de Montes Belos in Goiás state, were chosen as priority areas for attention and surveillance of chronic cases with the definition of uh, operational feasibility through agreements signed with the municipalities. Based on the estimates of prevalence, we wish to reach about 6,000 adults and children with uh, a potential of diagnosis in these five municipalities chosen. Here we represent the process for building the strategy. Context of vulnerability for Chagas disease, they're being recognized based on three basic studies, which are now being agreed upon with uh, regional health services and secretariats considering local specificities. Starting from realities of the disease in each territory and how the networks, the health uh, service networks work in each area, different uh, patterns in the past and now, we will then build four sub-studies through a strategy of participatory planning. The process of developing and the result of these four sub-studies will contribute towards building longitudinal actions, integrated actions in the different municipalities, which will allow us to form an integral health service network for people affected with Chagas. Educational processes for health professionals, managers, and communities will occur along the project. So as to overcome information barriers, assuring sustainability of the process, Substudy one will assess territories based on integral, integrated entomological, sanitary, and uh, environmental studies. We have here our colleague launching the library with actions that include education. The pilot study will be done in Minas Gerais municipality using dogs as sentinel animals for the surveillance and control of uh, disease in recent uh, notification areas. Based on the recognition of the populations at risk with trap amounts, people in the family will be invited to be part of uh, screening and tracing under counseling, defining the population that are that is vulnerable in the second study. In addition to people at risk in the territory, spontaneous demand will also be accepted and the third sub-study we will also accept strategic groups for organized demands such as uh, women at childbearing age pregnant women or not this was uh, a pilot stage of the project funded by unitaid as well as people under the uh, risk of being being infected with t cruzi the fourth sub-study is the popular the whole population affected Diagnosis will be confirmed and then will be referred to different lines of treatment to be agreed upon antiparasitic or symptomatic treatment of the determined types of disease, as well as rehabilitation and treatment. Notification of chronic cases. This is a significant achievement of the Ministry of Health in Brazil will be encouraged along the process in a general way. And in doing so, we will allow for the identification of real, actual numbers of people affected. So we acknowledge the Integra Chagas project as a strategic one for the strengthening of control of Chagas disease in our country in line with national policies of health. It will show 
in different areas, the interface we need to have between surveillance actions and health strategies. In a broader way, it intends to encourage the whole public health system in the country. Parallel to that, we will have the expansion in scale, but this depends upon engagement and support on the part of different institutions coordinated by Fiocruz and the Federal University of Ceará. So I would like to mention and thank the participation of the Ministry of Health through SAPS and all units from uh, Fiocruz Biomanguinhos, Fiocruz Minha, Minas, and Bahia, the social and grassroots movements, Casa de Chagas, Rio Chagas, Ashamba, and also mentioning the uh, newcomer, the Association of Goiás, being starting today. The Espinosa Porteirinha, San Desiderio, and Guaraci, and Montebello's uh, municipalities from these states and the, the partner in units, ABBA, University of uh, Pernambuco, and Rio, as well as uh, Doctors Without Frontiers and the NDI. So now we have this uh, symbolic way I'm sharing with you our website being launched today. And this presentation, which I am making now, plus the video, you will see now a very important moment provided by the audiovisual lab, Lab of Ciencias, coordinated by Professor Luis Antonio de Andrade, who are providing us this uh, art. Partners of Integra Chagas, they will be presenting now Quem foi que disse about the discovery of Chagas disease. I will now stop sharing. And you can please play the video from Lab of Ciencias by Professor Luis Antonio Botelho. Vocês estão... Não é o profe... Não é o vídeo da... It is not. Oh, now we have the video. Em 1907, a rede ferroviária central do Brasil. Em 1907, a rede ferroviária central do Brasil pediu ajuda ao grande cientista Oswaldo Cruz, diretor de Manguinhos, para lutar contra uma epidemia de malária que estava sendo um obstáculo para construir a rede de Corinto-Antirapora, em Minas Gerais, em uma pequena cidade. And Oswaldo Cruz called his main disciple, Carlos Chagas, and uh, gave this important mission to him. Of course, he accepted it. Carlos Chagas went by train to La Sense in 1907, June 6th, and he had Dr. Belisario Pena with him, and Francisco, an assistant, who had to record by film and photograph everything that was going on. Chegando a La Sense, os três when he arrived there, they were welcomed by the engineer Cantarino Mota, who was happy to take them 
to a wagon of passengers improvised as an outpatient unit. Carlos Chagas created, gave it a new function. The wagon also became a lab. Consultations by Carlos Chagas happened inside and near the wagon, but also in faraway areas near Rio das Vegas River in a camp that had been built for workers who were working on the railway. And in one of those visits, Constantino Motas gave Carlos Chagas a small flask with a very strange insect. He said the insect was common in the area. It lived in the cracks of the mud and wattle uh, homes and had the habit of sucking the blood of people there while they slept. These insects were popularly called chupão, kissing bugs. Carlos Chagas had never seen that insect and was intrigued by the re the by the event. When he, they left, they went directly to the lab wagon where they dissected the insect and looked at the intestinal content through a microscope he always carried with him. If he had been intrigued by the insect, he became even more intrigued when he saw a large amount of a tribe of, of a protozoa called tri of the trypanosoma type, although he had already seen trypanosomas in the blood of animals, minasans, called trypanosoma minasensi. This was different. After talking to Belisario Pena in the wagon, he asked, could the protozoa found in the gut of the kissing bug cause disease in the human beings or are they innocuous? Carlos Chagas could not test that in experimental animals in La Sense because most of the animals there were infected. So they sent the infected bugs to the Manguinhos Institute with Belisario Pena so that Osvaldo Cruz himself would make an experiment. Having naturally infected bugs, suck the blood of uh, lab animals and see whether or not they would be sick. The experiment was done. And after a few days, he sent a message to Carlos Chagas. Experimental animal sick, come soon. As soon as Carlos Chagas received the message, he went and caught the same train to Rio de Janeiro. He was anxious to reach the Manguinhos Institute in contrast to the long delayed journey through Minas Gerais. When he reached the lab at Osvaldo Cruz, they removed uh, blood from the experimental animal, put a drop on the slide, and when examining that under the microscope, they confirmed the same type of protozoa he had seen before in the gut of that bug. Since the protozoa had not been classified by the scientific community yet, Carlos Chagas named it T. cruzi to pay homage to Osvaldo Cruz. But a piece of the puzzle was missing, a human case, finding T. cruzi in an ill person. And that happened when Carlos Chagas went back to La Sense. The voyage, throughout the voyage, he was thinking. One of his thoughts was to search for kissing bugs and uh, sick people in those houses built with mud and water to find the bugs. In a localidade chamada Agua Boa, Chagas 
area, Carlos and uh, Belisario found uh, a home infested with bugs. A lady and his daughter, her daughter Berenice, were living there. And uh, the lady said she had never seen a doctor before. They examined the girl who was not sick and they inspected the whole house. A few days later, the poor lady and the daughter Berenice went to the walk-on lab. The mother was saying that the girl had fever, was uh, feeling sick and ill. Carlos Chagas removed a few a little blood from the girl and tested on the slide on April 14, 1909 and confirming T. cruzi in her blood. That closed the cycle of a disease that was unknown. It was called then Chagas disease. To pay homage to Carlos Ribeiro Justiniano Chagas, its discoverer. The discovery told here in uh, as a romance is considered the biggest Brazilian discovery in the area of biomedical sciences. And it should have won the Nobel Prize, but it was not. It did not. This is uh, an homage, a tribute to Carlos Chagas and all Brazilian scientists, and also Berenice, and all people affected by, Car by Chagas disease. And the nice lady here in the picture is Berenice in the story. She lived relatively well with the asymptomatic type of disease until 74 years of age. She liked cooking and telling her stories with Carlos Chagas to her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Qual a flor que abraça a terra com mãos da ternura e diz que o céu tem a distância de um grão? Qual a flor que desde menina labuta de homem brincar de ser grande com enxada e chão? E deixa na gente um cheiro de luta E fala do amor como essência do bem Sobre a dor É a flor do campesinato Brasil Que se viu nascer de um sonho real Bom, eu peço aqui imensas desculpas Well, I would like to apologize to Professor Luiz and all the group from Lava Ciencias that shared this fantastic video. But unfortunately, due to technical problems, we couldn't see it correctly. So I invite you all to watch the video at Integra Chagas Brazil, where the video is available. Um, I'm sorry, we, wouldn't, we weren't able to enjoy the video to its fullest and take advantage of the playful nature of the video. So I, I invite you all to see it again. Now we will uh, share a senior researcher, Professor Juan Carlos Diaz, that he put together a number of generations of researchers in and he was a cornerstone in the Brazilian society. And under his leadership, a lot of victories were reached. He reached the first and second consensus of the Chagas uh, disease. He was the responsible for landmark uh, activities in the Ministry of Health. And he participated in the Brazilian Forum in, of Neglected Diseases. And he uh, fought for the rights of people living with Chagas. And this was carried out through the universal health system in Brazil. Now, I invite you to enjoy the presentation of Juan Carlos Pinto Diaz. It is a video presentation of Juan Carlo Pinto Diaz.
Se não fosse Carlos Chagas, quem teria descoberto essa doença? Aonde e como? Could have been Who could have discovered this disease? Excuse us for technical problems. A cardiopatia estava lá, mas podia ser muitas coisas. Podia the ser... heart disease was there. It could have been anything. It could have been due to any disease, rheumatism, heart failure, other conditions. So, how could we imagine that this person had this parasite? But we uh, had to try to identify what we could, and we had to find somebody in a lab that would be interested in microbes, that could identify microbes, and somebody that would uh, be interested in microbes in animals, because Carlos Chaga discovered the first uh, triatomite uh, bug uh, parasite in animals, and this person would have had the possibility to associate this finding of the T. cruzi with fever or edema, increased heart rate. And this researcher should be somebody that could make uh, inferences and should trace an historic line through between the kissing bug and the parasite. And Carlos Chaga was this person. He was the best epidemiologist in Brazil, and he traveled the country to fight against malaria. He was the best epidemiologist we had. He had controlled at the Santista Bay Basin. He was a malaria specialist, and he was extremely successful in the control of the disease. So it's so interesting that he later on spent months and months, even two years, in the location trying to identify the kissing bug. Um, I'm, I apologize. Let's try to see whether we can show the interview of Professor João Carlos Pinto Dias, which is fantastic to listen to his voice. It's such an emotion to listen to Professor João Carlos Pinto Dias from Fiocruz, Minas. We have the knowledge of somebody that can bring back the past, talk about the present and the future, talking about Integra Chagas Brazil today, because we have a tremendous challenge ahead of us. And Simone Croft, on behalf of Osvaldo Cruz House. She is one of the greatest specialists we have. Let's see if her video will work. Se você conseguir passar o de Simone, senão a gente segue para a apresentação. If we cannot share the video, we will proceed with the presentation of the Ministry of Health. Obrigado. Okay, since we're running a little late, I apologize once again. I apologize uh, because we were not able to listen to Simone Crofts and Ron Carlos Pinto Dias' presentation in its full manner, but we reach the present day. So in spite of great adversities, the Ministry of Health of Brazil supports and makes all efforts to give a very fair Brazilian answer to people living with Chagas disease. The piece of legislation that was passed recently is a fantastic step forward. And Dr. Maurice, Laurizio Montero da Cruz, di director of the Immunization Department of Communicable Diseases of the Ministry of Health will make his uh, presentation. I will share his screen. Thank you very much, sir. You have the floor. I will share your screen and you can take the floor. Andrea, everybody, uh, good morning. And I would like to thank the invitation made to me and I would like to say hello to our president, 
Nisi, Nisi Trindade, I would like to uh, greet all of our friends present here today in this very special day, the World Chagas Disease Day, a day of happiness. We have learned so much this morning and it is a day of joy, of celebration, because we are celebrating this date, April 14th, as the World Chagas Disease Day, and we have participated and been part of many celebrations and tributes paid and made by Fio Cruz, by Maria Inez, by Andrea, with such relevant presentations and guests, such important government and non-government organizations present this morning today. And I would like to say that we are now reaching the end of our meeting after such an important, joyful, and relevant morning. I would like to thank, I would like to thank the general coordination of soil analysis and vector transmission. Marcelo Ada, the general coordinator, Agilson, the vice representative, and the team that works with us with Mayara, Verusa, and all our team members. I would like to talk about the relevancy of this day and the relevancy of the decrease of cases, chronic Chagas disease cases, as we have seen this morning, have decreased and we pay greater importance to this initiative. I extend our unconditional support to research work at Fio Cruz and other partner entities, but especially to Fio Cruz in such a relevant initiative that focuses on the prevention control and treatment of our disease. Chagas disease, which is the epidemiological scenario of Chagas disease in Brazil. Let's see which are the figures. Prevalence with updated figures in Brazil with a systematic review with a 4.2 prevalence during the 80s. Look at the relevancy of the piece of legislation I will share with you today so that all healthcare services in primary care change diagnosis. Estimates show that 4,600,000 people are infected by T. cruzi in Brazil. Imagine which is the relevancy of reporting cases so that health systems can really publish registries with precise and accurate indicators so that health systems can accurately publish estimates. Estimates are relevant and issues were very well presented by researchers this morning on pregnant women. The global objective of the initiative is to reduce vertical transmission and uh, congenital transmission, which is 5.2%. If vector transmission and if we are successful, since we have all the tools to decrease or eliminate vertical 
and congenital transmission, this effort made by research organizations will provide the Ministry of Health scientific information on pregnant women's transmission. We will be able to estimate reduction and elimination of vertical transmission. In 2010, there were, there were 34,629 pregnant women infected by T. cruzi. The relevancy of all of these figures, the important importance of these concepts will give us the possibility to eliminate or reduce these rates within the universal health system here in Brazil. Our strategy and managers and everybody involved together with the Salta Cruz Foundation have the strategic goal, as is the case of the communicable disease and immunization department in the Ministry of Health to focus and implement all our efforts to fight against neglected diseases. If we consider this epidemiologic scenario of Chagas disease in Brazil, we can see the forecast of estimates in prevalence of T. cruzi infection and chronic digestive and heart Chagas disease in Brazil. This is an historic series, 2015-2020. Infection estimates are really striking in 2015 and 2020 with similar figures and partnering with a technical area here at the agency, we believe that current figures could be the same or even higher. So we estimate that there could be 7,400,000 patients infected with more than 4,000 deaths. That is the fourth cause of death. And that is the, the fourth cause of death as a parasitic infectious disease. So we must focus and raise all efforts to decrease these incidence rates in the universal health system here in Brazil. So this Act, Act 1061, published on May 18, 2020, raises awareness on the issue. And this is part of a initiative to focus on work in municipalities and states so that health systems, apart from screening and treatment, report cases. And what is the importance and relevancy of reporting? Well, so that we can have reliable data banks and registries that will produce indicators to increase incidence rates, prevalence rates, monthly variations, annual variations as input for other policies that will strengthen Chagas disease control initiatives in Brazil. And what about challenges that lie ahead? Well, Andrea, this new 
piece of legislation and reporting will give us the possibility to identify what are the different demographic cl clusters of infection, um, adolescents, um, which are the indeterminate forms of the parasite, which are the percentages of the digestive and heart Chagas disease, we will successfully map silent areas and qualify them as transmission areas with reliable information to map incidents in the country. These figures will support monitoring and reactivation of chronic cases associated to HIV infection to picture the real prevalence of cases in Brazil. Vertical transmission rates will be assessed the cruise sea transmission rates, and we will also have input and information for screening and treatment. And as administrators in the Ministry of Health, we'll have input, reliable input for procure, procurement of drugs and other strategic input for Chagas disease control, and we will successfully monitor patients with screening programs and identify infected regions and states. That is, in infectology at its best, identifying endemic areas. So according to our objectives, apart from two projects that I shared with you earlier, Dar Chagas and Integra Chagas, and I'm sure that many other projects will be implemented. The Ministry of Health invested 6 million reais in Integra Chagas project to make access available and provide primary care in Bahia, Goiás, Minas, Pará, and Pernambuco states in Brazil making Chagas disease access, screening, and treatment available in primary care health centers. And we will map Chagas disease and primary health care centers will be able to provide treatment for Chagas disease patients. And legis piece of legislation 3,775 passed in December 24, 1990, will allocate 35 million reais in 434 municipalities to strengthen prevention, control, and malaria elimination initiatives together with other surveillance activities for other neglected diseases, as for instance, leishmaniasis and Chagas disease. And some municipalities will focus specifically on Chagas disease, 318 municipalities. And other than that, an important partnership, international partnership with Unit 8, $15 million will be allocated by Unit Aid 
a substantial amount of money with Brazil's contribution of four million US dollars for the development of new treatment and diagnosis technologies in Chagas disease, focused especially on reproductive age women and newborns. So the Ibero American project proposal for 250,000 euros with Brazil's contribution of 35,000 euros. It's a Mundo Sano initiative. So this project is called No Baby with Chagas Disease. It is an initiative, a joint initiative with PAHO and other partnering institution, institutions to launch this initiative, No Baby with Chagas, to focus strategic policies in the diagnosis, control, and treatment of Chagas disease, focusing pregnant women, newborns, children, and other persons that are in vulnerable situations. But the um, purpose of this all is to focus on research so that public policies can reach the users of the universal health system in Brazil, as we have seen with Joana and her story that moved us all. We were really moved by her words, and that is why we are here, and that is why uh, we are here with Andrea. Uh, and when we listened to Joanda from Finde Chagas, we were all very, very moved. Um, I have been part of the Ministry of Health of the Universal Health System in Brazil for more than 35 years. And it is an honor to participate and cooperate in the best initiatives for our population. So thank you very much for the invitation. And Andrea, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Lauricio, for your words, trying to defend science and the public health system. It is only through science that we can reach new, a new world in our country and uh, to achieve all benefits desired for affected people in Brazil and in Latin America as a whole. I would like to thank the whole team from the Ministry of Health and the Secretary of Health Surveillance and everyone you mentioned, Marcelo, Francisco, and the working group, Chagas, Verusca, Mayara, Rafaela, and all those who have been working with at Fio Cruz for so many years in trying to build our response to the control of Chagas disease in the country. With these words, I would like to thank you all and close for the day. The World Chagas Disease Day and this virtual distant model, in spite of all the difficulties, in spite of the health crisis we've been facing, our condolences and the solidarity is extended to all victims. And we go on today with the possibility of celebrating the advances we've been having in Tegra Chagas, the support of the Ministry of Health, UNITAID, the launch of the Cuida Chagas project, all providing a new hope for those affected with Chagas so that we can go back in time 
pain, repaying this debt that we've had with the 100 years of this disease without major achievements. It is for you, Joanda, and everyone you represent that we are here today at Pindashagas. This is why we are celebrating our progress and advances. Have a wonderful day. And I am now closing on behalf of Fiocruz. Thank you, Nisia and all representatives from Fiocruz, researchers from the Fiocruz. Thank you all.